Good day, Patrick uh, Builder here. Well, it's uh, finally time to start putting the siding on this thing. We've got all our, our trim and uh, our soffits and face and everything on. So, so now it's uh, time to finish up the job. I also got a new uh, staple gun today. Now this uh, staple gun is a special staple gun. Um, what this uh, gun does, uh, it, it's actually for doing siding. And uh, now the problem with siding is you don't actually staple siding to the wall. Uh, uh, you, you hang the siding. It has to be free to move. So what this uh, gun does, it's got a special tip. I'll just show it to you here. It's got this special tip here with uh, the two bumps on it here, and, th and that's for putting in the holes of the uh, siding. And what it does is it sets the, the, uh, the staple above the siding so that uh, the, the siding is still free to move afterward. See, uh, the traditional way is to, is to use a, a uh, roofing nail and, and just uh, uh, put it in loosely. But uh, with this new uh, this new siding uh, stapler, it uh, can actually uh, set it so that the staple uh, sits above, and then it's got two little bumps that uh, are guided into the uh, the slot here on the siding. Um, so so that that should make the job go quicker and easier today. Siding, the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to put your corners on. Now I've got this one pre-cut here so you can see the, the funny uh, cut we have to do to uh, fit right up inside here and I'm going to show you right away how I got that measurement. And basically, basically what you do is you just start out, uh, you take your square and you mark off three inches on the inside of both your corners here because because that's where your uh, where your corner is going to come. Now this part here is actually three inches, and uh, this here overhangs a bit. But with the projection, because this actually sits out a bit from the wall, this here will actually uh, line up with that with the edge of that line, and that, that that's where you need to be. Um, so. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our measuring tape and we're going to measure. Now that we've got this mark three inches, we need to measure from the bottom of the uh, soffit here all the way up directly above to this point right here. And that, in this case, is eight and a half inches. Now, your shed's obviously going to be whatever it is, but in my case, it's eight and a half inches. And then what you're going to do is measure from that point all the way down to the bottom here and you want to hang over at least an inch. Uh, oh, uh, now, now make sure uh, you uh, hang over the floor uh, and not just the wall. Okay, The floor is generally another half three quarters of an inch so make sure you're you're hanging an inch below the, the floor. And then that measurement that you have there is going to be from the bottom of this piece all the way to the very top here. So I've already got the first corner done. We're going to measure up the second corner and it should be identical to the first only, only everything should be in reverse. Uh, so we're just going to start here by marking out uh, from the bottom of the soffit. We're going to mark our three inches here. We're going to come down here. We're going to mark another three inches and we're going to go around the corner here and do the same just mark off our three inches that's basically just tells us where the uh, where the edge of our, our uh, corner uh, plastic is going to line up so 
that will come in handy uh, when it comes time to actually put the, uh, the, the siding on. Now, what we're going to do here, just take a straight edge, and I, I put a mark here so I can line up the two, just use a, a board as a straight edge, and go right up to uh, under, just under the, uh, the J trim there, and we're just going to mark that line all the way down so that we can uh, see where we're going with this. Now with that line in place, we can just double check our measurements and we can make sure that they match up to what they should be on the other side. Again, just remember to, to uh, you can just add everything up, whatever it comes up to, and just remember to add the extra inch on the bottom. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm just going to transfer all of these marks and measurements onto this uh, piece of, uh, of corner, but when I do that, I'm going to reverse everything, and that way it'll fit the opposite side. And one of the first cuts I need to make is actually a 45 degree cut from the top down uh, to, the, to this point here, which uh, in my case is an inch and three eighths. Uh, now, you're going to have to go by your measurements on your building because you're probably in all likelihood not going to have the same measurements. But an easy way to get that 45 degree angle is just simply put your square on the inside of the back and just mark it like that. And then you just take your cutters and start cutting. see down below here you can see it, it's got a fold over in here so what we need to do is get our square in there okay and just line that up and off the rest of our line. We know this measurement here. We transfer that onto here. In my case it's an inch and three eighths, but like I say, measure measure your building because your building is probably going to be different. Straight edge of the square. There we go. Okay. Now that in there, we can cut down here. Now, this whole portion here that I'm going to cut it is all going to be waste, so what we can do is we can actually make life a little easier by just cutting into the end there, like so, and Thank you. 
this corner off. That just makes life easier to get the uh, get the snips in. What we want to do now is pull this plastic back. Just cut that off because it's just waste plastic anyways. And it also makes life easier for cutting around the corner here as well because now with that down there we can just cut up to the line. There we go. And it's really easy now to just come in from this side. piece anyway so we don't really have to take a whole lot of care with it. We can just cut into it. cut in the center here is just to simply uh, do that cut there on the and then come in and do the lip underneath and then turn it around so you can catch the underside here and just pinch that through and just a couple a couple of snips and you'll have that you don't have to be too neat with the uh, stuff on the inside here because that all gets hidden anyways. So once you got that, just flip it around and do the same thing to the other side. Just uh, give her a snip there. Snip there, come in, do the underside. And then you can come in and uh, cut these with a pair of offsets. It's usually easier to get in there. Or another way is to just come in from the top, just pinch it, and Give it a good snip and then uh, come in and uh, get it like so. There we go. Once you've got the one side, the, uh, the other side is usually fairly easy to get into. And voila. Now just uh, we'll test that and make sure that fits. Now, I just want to show you a quick little uh, tip here to save yourself a couple of dollars. Uh, the, these corners here, um, I, pay, I pay contractor rate for them. I pay about 30 bucks a piece for these things. Uh, so, so here's a little tip to save you some money. Uh, what you can do, uh, if you got short sides, as, as, as I do, uh, each one is just over, a, uh, uh, over half a length of a uh, corner. So what you do is, uh, instead of buying four corners, you buy three corners, and on the back corner, you, you do a splice on, on one, of the, one of the corners that, that are hidden. That's really easy. You just take, take your, uh, a short piece of, of, uh, of corner, and you, you put it on the bottom, and then you overlap the, the, uh, the top piece. 
and that'll actually uh, uh, save you the cost of, of one length of, uh, of corner. So we're just going to take this and you know, put it on our, our bottom mark. Now, make sure you overhang this uh, a bit so that uh, the other side uh, line it up with your marks and there we go there we go that's all there is to that now, it can be a bit of a struggle to get this into place but uh, you can see it doesn't look that bad when when, when uh, you know it's hidden at the corner back of a building and of course if you got a really tall building anyways you, you have to over, overlap these things anyways now uh, like, like I say it can be a bit of a struggle to get get that overlapped but make sure the top piece always overlaps the bottom piece uh, in, in anything that you're doing with siding the, the top needs to overlap the bottom and that's just so the water sheds off the building because if you do it the other way around it'll draw water inside the building and you don't want that Okay, so once we've uh, finished uh, cutting out all the corners, we need to put them into place. And to do that, it's very simple. You just simply uh, push it up, line it in, line the edge of this up with your mark that you made that should be three inches in, and uh, start tacking it into place. And uh, you can use either a uh, roofing nail or a, a, a gun like I've got here that. Uh, We'll hold the uh, the corner into place, and just like so, just uh, every five or six uh, slots, just, just just put something in, tack it at the top, then tack it at the bottom, and then go in and get the get the middle, uh, and, and that way it's nice and square. Now after after we've uh, cut. Uh, put the corners on. The next step is going to be to put the J's on and we're going to put those across the uh, top and down any of the sides where, where, where we haven't got a corner and that'll just uh, be so that we can, can, can put our uh, siding I inside the slot here and, and uh, just have you know, sets of the water sheds. Okay, so now it's time to get the rest of the uh, trim on before we start our siding. And the first thing I've done is I'm going to put a piece under the threshold. Now normally the J trim ha ha has, has the nailing strip there, but what I've done, I've taken and cut the nailing strip off, and I'm just going to turn this down like so. I'm going to put that up underneath the, uh, the threshold here. And I'm just going to take a, uh, a nailing gun now, and I'm going to go up at an angle and uh, get that in there. And that's a little bit of a trick to get at that angle. But there we go. I got it. Put a couple extra in, make sure it stays there. <laughs> that just... Uh, cleans the bottom up real nicely there below the door. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is uh, put uh, so, some, some J-channel up this side and across this uh, top part here. Now, whenever you have to do a bend that's more than 90 degrees, it's a good idea just to cut it out at the back here. So it just makes bending your, your, uh, your uh, channel a whole lot easier. Uh, Bring that down. Well, you're gonna have to cut that out a little more yet, but uh, but you get the idea. I can do a better than 90 degree bend now. But okay, so just mark that off there, so we can see where to trim it here. Uh, tuck that tucks in behind here. So now when we bring our siding up, it's just gonna tuck right in in, in under the J there. Uh, uh, also cut on the front as well. It just helps to to bend it over and so I just have to trim that. 
thing is, once you finally got all your fancy little cuts done, you can just slip that, just slip that right inside there, tuck that up tight into that corner, and then you can just mount the uh, piece now. So, so now you can just carry on with the, with your trim, get all your trims around the the uh, various uh, spots where you need them and then we can go on to the actual siding. Okay, so the next step we're going to do is uh, put on our our, uh, our our starter strip and that's just a, a simple little piece here, the the, the underside of the, uh, the bottom piece of the siding catches on here and it just holds it in place so it doesn't lift up on you. Now I want to introduce you to another little tool here this here is a, a, a hole punch, and basically what this uh, does uh, is it just makes these little holes here. You just simply go put it in like so, and just squeeze the heck out of it, and there we go, we've got a hole. And uh, this comes in handy because you don't always have holes where you need them. Uh, in this case, I've got a very small little piece of plastic, and I, I needed a hole right in the middle here. And the only place I can, the only way I can get that is is with a hole punch. So this piece, you just simply line that up with the very bottom of, of where you want your uh, your uh, siding to go. And you simply stay. Uh, put that in place. There we go. And then you just take your siding and just slide that up there. And you just hook that on and it clicks into place. And then you just Put your siding on. Step your siding in and onto the next piece. Now, normally it's uh, a little easier than this. This is going to be a little tighter because I've got uh, not very much space to play with. I'm trying to put a little. just hooks the bottom there and just keep on going all the way up and just that's pretty much it <laughs> just go until you until you're done the building uh, little little cutting tricks at the top there I'll show you here shortly but uh, that's the main the main job right there is just just getting these siding pieces in Well, you, you, you want to try and have about a half an inch uh, uh, under each uh, side here. Now, I think because I'm so tight here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a quarter inch off here and uh, and that'll uh, reduce the amount I have to struggle. But, but normally you'd want to have at least a, a half an inch under each side. Uh, for, and that just uh, prevents water from, from, from getting around it that, that, that easily so it can be drawn inside the building. Okay, so as you can see here, I took a quarter inch off and these a little tighter, but they're a lot easier to get in now. But, yeah, just lift it up into place and staple away. Okay, so for this last piece, just take that, just tuck it in tight there. And I'm going to stay about a quarter inch below the edge of the, uh, the J trim there. Just tuck it up in there tight, just make a mark. And we're just going to cut that off at 45 degree angle because that's what this is. Okay, it was a little bit of a struggle, but we got it in. And there we go. Now. 
one last little piece right there. And I'll show you a trick for that. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get this basically the shape we need it, roughly the size. Uh, just put it in place. It'll be about uh, oh, three eighths of an inch below the edge here. We'll just make a mark here. We're going to go up 45 degrees. And as well, make, we're going to take a little bit uh, off that edge there because we're still a little bit too wide. We want to be wide enough that, that we can completely cover that, that, that bottom part there. And we know that we're going to have to go right about there. Okay, so I've got another little tool here. And what this little tool does is, I'm going to take this tool like so, and I'm going to punch, and it's going to lift a piece of uh, plastic up. Now, I'm going to do that on the sides that are going to go into here, and I'm going to do it along the top edge here like so and what this is going to do when I push this in this is a one-way operation when I push the, I'm going to slide this piece under here now that I'm sure it fits and once it's inside it's going to lock into the J's uh, because the J's have a little bit of a hook back there and that little piece of plastic is just going to go up there and it's going to catch that and that's going to be permanently locked in there that's not going to come out so there we go that that piece is permanently locked in there now okay so the next thing we need to do is uh, to, to get the the, uh, the siding into our door sections but one thing that we want to do just for an aesthetic thing here we want to make sure that the that these uh, 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 these indentations, I guess you can call them, line up with uh, on the side here. So, so, so what we're going to do, we're going to take a, uh, a straight edge. We're just going to put it through there. And, okay, just put it across like so. And we need to measure this distance right here, which is about an inch. Okay. And what we're going to do now... We're going to take an inch, we're going to cut it off the bottom of this piece, and then we're, we're going to tuck it down. We're also going to take, take our, our, our little uh, little punch, we're going to lift the, 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 little, the little plastic hooks so it catches on the inside of, of the, uh, the J there. Okay, so, and, and then once that's uh, done, then these here will, will all line up all the way across. It just looks a whole lot neater that way. Okay, so we'll just do a test fitting here and drop that in there like so and just stand back here and, and that looks like that, that's going to line up just nicely here. So, 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 so we'll go with that and we'll just uh, carry on. We'll just try it with the straight edge now and yeah, that, 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 that looks pretty darn close to me so I think we're just going to go with that.